to be built quickly if you try to rehearse what you just heard. So that is called active listening. And if you actually then try to say it, what you just heard, that is called reflective listening. That actually makes it even more um, tattooed on the brain. It becomes even more um, sustained. So, so do active listening or do reflective listening, whatever works for you. Uh, it is funny, my son does reflective reading. So he reads it, then he speaks it. And if you're around him, you, you'll find him talking with himself. But it works for him. It works for me too. <laughs> so the other is pluripotent. Pluripotent, now I'm not separating the word, but the pluripotent, pluri again means multiple, plural, right, pluri. But it cannot make the whole organism. It can make a part of the organism, multiple cell types, but a part, not the full organism. So in case of us, our lecture today, bone marrow, stem cell, start the, the, the very first, very parent stem cell within the bone marrow, which makes all the, the blood cells, WBCs, RBCs, megakaryocytes and lymphoid tissue, all of those, not tissue, lymph, not lymphoid tissue, lymphoid cells, all of those cells are derived from pluripotent stem cell in the bone marrow. One thing, this is something which is relevant to us. Then we can have, after the pluripotent, we could have multipotent. Multipotent stem cell. A multipotent stem cell, so, so here's the thing. As we go down, this has the biggest potency. And as we keep going down, this, the potency is going to keep reducing. Right? So if this guy has a potency of this big, then as we keep going down on the scale, you would see the potency would keep reducing. So of course, multipotent means it would make lesser type of cells than pluripotent. How can I discuss that in terms of the bone marrow? The, the pluripotent cell in the bone marrow makes myeloid tissue or myeloid cells and lymphoid cells, right? Amongst these two, this guy here who is pluripotent, I'll make P's here, this guy is pluripotent, he makes myeloid and lymphoid, but all in all, he makes all the blood cells. It doesn't make all, this guy does not make all the body cells, it makes all the blood cells. So it is a pluripotent cell. On the other hand, this myeloid cell, we call it myeloid progenitor, myeloid progenitor, progenitor. This guy is called a blast. This pluripotent cell, in the case of the blood, is called a blast cell. So this progenitor cell, this parent cell, only makes cells of the myeloid lineage. Lineage means the inheritance, the generations. So it only makes the cells of the myeloid lineage. What does that mean? It would make um, megakaryocytes. It would make erythrocytes, red blood cells. It would make granulocytes and it would make monocytes. So from this will come cells which will make these cells, but not T lymphocytes and B lymphocytes. So if you think about it, this guy, the daughter cells coming from here give rise to all cells, all blood cells or all um, WBCs, RBCs and megakaryocytes. When we talk about myeloid, then we have a cell which only gives rise to all cells except the lymph cells. And when we talk about lymph, that would give T and B cells. Then, hold on, granulocyte here, this cell only give rise to granulocytes, which are eosinophils, basophils, and, and neutrophils, our star today, 
are celebrity today in the neutrophil. So as we continue, so if you see this is not totiopotent, right? He's not going to make, this is not going to make all the body cells. So this is not us, useful for us. This is a pluripotent cell, it's going to make a lot of blood cells, all blood cells. Why do I say blood cells? Blood cells, WBCs, platelets, uh, red blood cells, all cells. Then this guy is multipotent. He can make blood cells, but not all of them, right? And then we have, if we come here, then we have oligopotent, oligopotent. And um, see, I'm making them all the same. It's really difficult to differentiate various stem cells from each other. So the, there are many ways to study them, but important thing is that stem cells are really very less. I think that there is one stem cell per uh, thousand cells or more, but really they, they are very, not thousand, probably one million. So I forgot that, but there is really a very small number of stem cells. And to then figure out that which one is pluripotent and which one is multipotent and oligopotent, that is really difficult. But thankfully there are scientists who are sitting together, maybe you will be one tomorrow, who are sitting together, who are, who are working on these things and finding out ways and mechanisms to find that out. Anyways, oligopotents are, which are multiple type of cells, but not too many. And finally, unipotent, unipotent, uni. Potent. Unipotent are their stem cells, that means they will make themselves and they will make the other cell, but they only give one other type. They would only give one other type. So for example, in this neutrophil lineage, we will talk about committed cell here, which would only be making neutrophils. So that is a stem cell, it would refresh itself and make more stem cells which would give rise to neutrophils plus it would give rise to neutrophil. So this would be a unipotent cell, right? So oligopotent simply means multiple, so multipotent and oligopotent sort of the same thing. So anyways, these are the stem cells and their various um, names. Uh, we are now going to talk about how the neutrophil comes together from this. So I think that you would agree that we are providing some respect to the bone marrow cell who is going to be helping us for our defense. So we have hemocytoblast. This cell here, he is the, you see he looks very serious. So this, this cell is sitting here and this guy This is hemocytoblast. So the hemocytoblast is going to make all blood cells. So that is our bone marrow cell primary. From the hemocytoblast, as we just talked, would come myelo, myelocyte progenitor and lymphoid or lymphocyte progenitor, lymphoid progenitor. Let me just make them the same, myeloid myeloid progenitor and lymphoid progenitor. From the myeloid progenitor will come myeloblast. This myeloblast would then give rise to, in our case, so we are, we are really um, looking at the neutrophils. This would give rise to myeloblast and we would have pro myelo myelocyte and this would be pro. So here the important thing is this. Let's say at the end we're going to end up with the neutrophil, right? Neutrophil. This is the final mature cell. So as long as this cell is in the bone marrow being formed, it's going to be called myelo. Once that myelo leaves the bone marrow, then depending upon its staining, we'll call it a neutrophil or a basophil or a, or a um, uh, what is that, eosinophil. So here in its formation, 